Welcome back everybody to World of Tanks Xbox 360 Edition. My name as always is Maxwell. I've got a couple of decent replays for you today. First one's going to be in the M4 Sherman, which is a tier 5 medium tank for the Americans. Second one is going to be in my darling the Panzer 5-4. Really starting to love that tank at the moment and having some... Uh, I wouldn't say groundbreaking or earth shattering games in it, but definitely having games where I'm enjoying it and having a lot of fun. So that's enough of talking about the Panzer 5-4, let's get on to the M4 Sherman, which again is another fantastically fun tank. As you can see it's pretty agile, pretty mobile, gets up to a decent speed. And you can equip that 105mm derp cannon, or the mini derp cannon as it's uh, better known, which fires the high explosive shells. It's got really shitty penetration, but... If you manage to penetrate a target, you are going to do crazy amounts of damage. And even if you can't penetrate a target, as long as you get uh, thin enough armor, if it doesn't penetrate through, you're still going to do some damage to the target. The only way you're not going to do damage is if its uh, armor is considerably thicker than, than uh, the caliber of the weapon. So I was moving up to the center straight away on this map just to try and get some spotting on the enemy tanks as they come in but as you can see I actually get spotted out first. I do see that Panzer IV there. I'm just having to cast around to see if I can get a shot on that Churchill one but it's not to be. So I'm kind of just standing here and trying to stop anybody who wants to make a move over this hill uh, and be idiotic in that way. I start to move forward and see that the Panzer IV is making a move back at the same time. So I head out in an effort to try and get him and get him I do as you see straight through the weaker side armor and doing full 420 hit points damage there. And uh, That's what this gun is capable of if you're able to get thin enough armor that the shell can penetrate. I just want to take some cover we have got tanks pushing straight over the top here, but I'm still not really wanting to do that myself as you will see in a minute or so once these guys do fully crest the hill and start getting pounded on by the enemy's tank destroyers that there are quite a lot of base campers on this map. And I mean, it's not any it's not any detriment to them. It's not saying that they're doing it wrong, but as you can see, four tank destroyers all clustered around that small area there. That's just the way this map goes, that if people do come straight over the top, then the places that they are there is the best places for them. Gotta spend a while aiming with this cannon, as it's not fantastically accurate, but as you can see, it does get the job done and does do crazy amounts of damage. So we've taken out a few of those tank destroyers. I think there's two of them left in that area. So we'll just want to sort of hang around a little bit. We do see a heavy tank on the left-hand side there. I don't really want to push over too far because I don't want to take any fire. So as you can see, this Panzer IV is getting hit from somewhere. Although we do have that Stug 3 minute dash. And as you can see, their tank destroyer is actually already relocating as they don't want to get hit too badly. Do spot out the T1 Heavy here, I decide to shoot him right in his gun, as that seems like the most likely place to penetrate, and as you can see I do a little bit of damage and destroy his gun at the same time. Because if I shoot him anywhere else, I'm probably just not going to do any damage whatsoever, because the armor's too thick, as you can see they hit just to the side of the gun on the mantle, and because that's spaced armor, the shell explodes and doesn't really do any kind of penetrating damage whatsoever. So this is, this is the only real mistake I make in this game, as I head over to this flank to try and take on this T-82. What I don't really realise is we've that our guys are more than capable of handling that situation themselves. What I really should have done is start heading down the road in the opposite direction and lending a hand to the town. I mean, the town can deal with itself as well. It's not like they're going to get overwhelmed if I don't go over there and help, but I would have been, at least been able to pick up some damage there, because as you can see, they are squaring off against each other head-on. And uh, as you're about to see in a second, when I crest over this hill here, I'm going to have lovely shots on this Churchill Mark 1. So if I'd gone there earlier, probably could have scored more damage than uh, than I actually did in this game. Letting the reticule close in, but as you can see, the horrible accuracy of this cannon coming into play. And uh, we've got a heavy tank also in sort of close combat with that Churchill 1. I'm just going to be careful not to hurt him, because one way you can cause team damage in this is with a splash from a HE round. I'm not sure if that's still the case, but it definitely was when the game first came out that you were able to damage your allies with, uh, with splash from HE rounds. And because this thing only fires HE rounds, got to be careful of that one. So they've got this tank destroyer, the Marder 2 left, and then it's a Churchill Mark 3, I'm pretty sure. So again, got to spend the time aiming with this cannon, but when you do spend the time aiming with a cannon, you're rewarded with damage like that. So hit the Marder 2 there and did a good chunk of damage taking that guy out as well. 
that just leaves the Churchill Mark III left, and because, as you saw on the minimap there, we're all closing in from every single direction, the only place it can be is in this top corner, and indeed that is the place that he is. Now I stop here to aim because I thought I could see more of the Churchill than I could. I do get a penetrating hit, which is surprising. I didn't think I'd be able to get one through the thick turret armour, but uh, able to do that. I decided just to have a shot on the move now, because I reckon that Churchill 3 is going to take out that Hetzer, and that's going to be left to me to come in and take him out. So I don't want to stop to fire just because of how terrible a position they're in. Uh, do hit... The Churchill 3 again on the move. Sometimes it's worth having those shots on the move. If you're not going to stop anyway, you might as well take the shot on the move just in case you hit. Uh, dude, a little bit of a mistake here. I probably should have spent a little bit more time aiming at a total weak spot. Because that probably would have penetrated and did full damage. And I would have picked up the kill with for that one. As it is, someone else comes in and finishes him off. But it's still a pretty damn good game and a fine score. Like I said, not setting the world on fire, but doing a decent amount of damage and picking up three kills with this derp cannon, as you're about to see. And a decent amount of XP as well, 1500 undoubled, a Reaper medal. And uh, if we take a quick look at the scoreboard, you'll actually see I did 1337 damage, which is leet damage. So that's nice uh, for me. Top on damage, but not top on XP. As you can see, our Churchill 3 did a good chunk of damage. Also got three kills. And uh, because it's a premium, the Churchill 3, it just gets a better a better XP bonus than uh, other tanks. So there's a quick look at the scoreboard for you guys. You can take it in, drink it in, look at all the stats for you guys who like to look at those kind of things. And then we're on to the next game. This one's a Sand River. At night, and it's an encounter battle, and again, like I said earlier, it's driving the Panzer. <clears throat> excuse me, driving the Panzer 5-4. Now I'm definitely starting to love this tank. I liked it to begin with, and now I'm really starting to love it. It's uh, it's got the body of a Panther, so it's pretty nicely armoured. I mean, on paper, the armour's not fantastically thick, but it is beautifully sloped. So you do tend to bounce quite a lot of shots. Your lower plate's quite a weak spot, but then again, you're only a medium tank. You're not supposed to be in there duking it out face-to-face -face with people. Although at tier 5 with this thing, you can because the Panther is a tier 7 tank. And you've got a ridiculous, ridiculous amount of hit points for your tier. 870 is still 200 more than a tier 5 heavy tank. And you are a tier 5 medium tank. Now, I'm coming up this direction in Sand River just to try and take the enemy off guard, but one thing I'm quite aware of is I don't really technically want to go hull down with this tank. I mean, it's not a bad thing. Going hull down at least makes you a smaller target and gives you a smaller profile, so it makes you harder to hit for the enemy, but it's not a necessity, especially with the turret on this thing. The turret of this tank is really the weak spot. Uh, it's definitely, definitely not as well armoured as the body of the tank. So, really, I've got no need to go hull down. The only reason to really go hull down is just because it makes you a smaller target and gives you a smaller profile. A little bit unfortunate not to take out that Panzer IV. I start to advance forward, and any second now, there we go. I take a hit in the side from this T-49, and thus begins a game of chase. <laughs> so, T-49 leaves himself hanging out just a little bit too long there. I thought he could sneak one more shot in, but I managed to reload in time. Uh, I'm going to sit and just look at his location. I don't think he's going to pop himself out again. He does, but he rushes his shot. And there's no chance he's going to be able to hit it. And I don't think he realises how fast the Panzer 5-4 is. Because in a couple of seconds, I've made it all the way up this road here. As you can see, even up this little hill, I'm going 40 to 50 kilometres an hour. Uh, so really, the only choice this T-49 has is to stand and fight. But his armour is literally made of paper. So he does the only smart thing here. just runs the hell away tail between his legs. Now, the T-49 does have a good cannon. It has decent penetration and a good rate of fire, but still, against the slope front armour of this tank, it's going to have troubles. And as you can see, there he is, the T-49, making a break for it in the background. But you can also see there's a Stug-3 also making a break for it. So he was obviously up on this hill earlier, saw what was happening, and decided to make here with the T-49. Now, he's taken a couple of hits in the rear, so decides to do the only real thing he can. He can't get in the cover in time, I don't think, before I could destroy him. So he turns around and puts his front armour facing my gun, which is pretty damn smart because I bounced two shots immediately from him. But uh, after that, I've got his number and uh, able to take him out. T-49 comes back in an effort to offer some support. And this Panzer IV 
comes as well. T49 drop back just in time for me to be able to hit that Panzer IV. As you can see, the T49 doing the smart thing of having the shots. He leaves himself out a little bit too long, which is how I was able to get my second shot on him. And as you can see, he's doing the the technique of half poking himself out, trying to lure me into firing uh, a bad shot. But what I do is just wait till I fade into the fog of war, fire a shot anyway, just in case he's poked himself out uh, whilst hidden, and then I advance. Now, in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have done that, as that probably revealed my position and he saw me coming. I probably should have just charged him, but then again, I'm fast enough. He was able to make it to the little indentation here and turn himself around, but again... He's, no, he's just nowhere near fast enough to get away from a Panzer 5-4. Uh, as you can see, its acceleration is so phenomenal. So the enemy team's all starting a base capture here, but they've only got one tank in there, and we have one tank in there. They've only got a couple of tank destroyers and a couple of M4 Shermans, I think that is. So I'm having a hunt around now because I really do feel like just ramming somebody to death at this point. I haven't rammed anybody in this game yet. Uh, find an M4. He is on the move though and behind cover before I'm able to snap my shot off. The one thing with this tank is because it's got a silly small turret, the gun depression is absolutely awful with it. So I'm thinking about coming around and ramming this M4 Sherman, but as you can see there's another couple of tanks on the right hand side and I get my track taken out here and don't have the gun depression to get him, so I just leave him alone and head over and hit that Panzer IV that I was shooting at at the beginning of the game who for some reason just presents all of his rear armour. And in the meantime, someone else takes out the Panzer IV that I was fighting with earlier. And that just leaves this T-82, which I'm making a beeline for, because so far I've gotten five kills. And it would have been nice to have picked up a Top Gun medal, but it's just not to be. The Hetz is going to Hetz, and he's going to steal the kill. Well, not steal, but uh, he's going to deny me my Top Gun medal. But still, it was a well-played game. And uh, had a lot of fun doing it. Like I said, it wasn't going to set the world on fire, but it was fun. Steel wall metal, obviously, because it's a Panzer 5 4, and that's what it does. And we've mastered Brothers in Arms, which is awesome. Uh, for those of you who were asking, the. Well, I'll get to that later. We'll have a look at the stats first and have a look at 1200 damage, which is pretty good considering the alpha damage on this cannon. 176 spotting damage, 1300 XP, and 5 kills. As you can see, it's a nice amount of undoubled XP there, 1,300. If you want to just take a look, you can compare it to the other people on the team. So, for those of you waiting for the crew skill uh, tutorial, it will be coming probably this week. I just wanted to have a look and familiarise myself with it fully and uh, do a little bit of research before I brought out a video which would be immortalised on YouTube for all eternity and uh, open myself up to people coming into the comments section and going, well, that's not right. <laughs> so I just wanted to get a little bit of research done before I immortalise that on YouTube. But like I said, tutorial for the crew skill should hopefully be coming this week. So, hope you enjoyed this World of Tanks Xbox 360 video. If you did, leave me a like and stick a comment in the comments section below if you're not already then definitely hit that subscribe button because there's more world of tanks xbox content to come in the future because i know you guys are hurting for it because not many people do videos for this genre well not genre but for this game the 360 version so thanks for watching everybody i've been maxwell this has been world of tanks xbox 360 and i will catch you guys next time